just uh, if you want to get your communion um, ready, if you haven't got one, there's still some out on the tray. If you want to go out and get one, feel free to go out and get one. And just while you're doing that, I'll just make a comment. Of, so a great sermon. Bless you. Thank you. And uh, I like that image of Jesus, the game changer. I did wonder when you said Jesus saw something in Peter, his faith, his potential, his capacity, and called him to go out and care for the lambs, whether you thought of anything broader than the Peter in the text. <laughs> Maybe the Peter on my left could have also been uh, someone uh, who uh, was part of the cast of unlikely ordinary people that uh, we all are in reality. And God's challenge to us to go out into the world with words, actions of redemption, and that we join together in this sacrament to be equipped to continue that role that we are called, we are called to. And as we share together in this communion, we actually, it's six, probably roughly, just over 61 years that uh, Peter was uh, ordained and uh, in that uh, ordination service there would have been a communion, Peter, I would assume? Not in the ordination. Right. I celebrated communion the following Sunday. At your introduction. <laughs> but I was celebrated on the Thursday after Easter, the Thursday in Easter week. So it was very much an Easter celebration. Very appropriate for the timing of which, uh, as we planned this, the timing actually worked very well, Peter, to uh, coincide with, uh, with that. Let's join in prayer as we prepare ourselves as those words and that sense of call to us and the equipping and empowering and presence of God in these elements. Let us pray. Be present, risen, Lord Jesus as you were with your disciples, and make yourself known to us in the breaking of bread. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Hear the words of institution of this sacrament as recorded by the Apostle Paul, whom you have recently heard of. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, according to our Saviour's command, we set this bread and this cup apart for the Holy Supper to which he calls us, and we come to God with our prayers of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks. To the Lord, our God, our Great One. It is right, right to give, to give our thanks and praise. With all we are, we give you glory, Trinity of love, the one and holy God, far beyond all time and space. We bless you for this wide red land for its rugged beauty, its changing seasons, for its diverse peoples, and for all that lives upon this fragile earth. We bless you for Christ, who took up the cause of the downtrodden, 
who gave his life to the many for the workers and the neglected and the overlooked, who brings peace to the tortured and abused, and who gathers us to work for equality, fairness and generosity. You have called us here to be the church, to give voice to every creature under heaven. We rejoice with all that you have made as we join the company of heaven, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So in remembrance of all you had done for us, we take this bread and this cup and offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice made worthy by the most worthy offering of Christ, our great leader and our great rescue. By your word and Holy Spirit, bless this bread and this wine that we may truly share Christ's body and blood and become by grace his body given for the sake of the world. And this is my commemoration. I ask you to give thanks with me gathered here today for my parents Jack and Dorothy, my grandparents Carl and Bella, Jane and Roland, for those who contributed to my ministry, for the church and the community of many places, of Temple Stowe, of Ormond College, of Merby North, of Dandenong North, of Werribee, of John Knox Church, Garden Vale, of Williamstown, of Pasco Vale, of Ewing Memorial Church and of Cheltenham Men's Home, of the Presbyterian Church that joined to become the Uniting Church, for leaders and those who gave so much help and care. Also, we pray today for the Presbytery of Port Phillip East and for Andrea Mays, who is to be ordained later today. Giving thanks for the goodness of friends and the insight of many for the blessings of love and the fruits of the Spirit, we have so much for which we deeply praise and thank you, great loving one, life giver and eternal, our God. Amen. Christ is the bread of joy who shares food with the unworthy. Christ is the cup of life who revives the brokenhearted. Let us receive what we are. Let us become what we receive, the body of Christ. We come now to share in our different ways as closely as we're able in the communion of Christ's self-giving, praying to be helped, healed, forgiven and restored. And the love which comes to each of us and to all together. Receive this holy sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ's body broken for you. Amen. 
Amen. Christ's life poured out for you. Let us pray. God of grace, you renew us at your table with the bread of life. We thank you for your call. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the commission to share that love in words and deeds. May this food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you in each other. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. I almost feel I should do a drum roll now because we've come to the stage that we've all been waiting for. Tom, Peter. So thank you, thank you very much for invi <coughs> inviting me to uh, come here today for this very special occasion. And it's very delightful to be in this uh, St Andrews by the sea. It's a, a beautiful uh, building and thank you very much for your welcome. Uh, Peter is a biographer's great friend. He writes his own biography, which, uh, which you've got. But I did talk to him last night and I'd, I found out a, a couple of things that aren't written down here. So, so Peter started his, uh, his uh, academic career doing civil engineering at, uh, at what was then Swinburne Technical College. And curiously, I was once the Dean of Engineering at Swinburne <laughs> University of Technology. So we failed to produce an engineer, but he was soon called to the uh, ministry and switched to studying arts at Melbourne University and theological training at Ormond College. As, as you've read in this uh, biography, he was ordained in April 1961, on Easter Thursday, again at St Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Merbu North, and was minister there until 1967. He served in the Presbyterian Church in parishes around Melbourne, including being an Air Force chaplain. He was minister at Gardenvale in 1977, when the Uniting Church was formed, and he served in as a Uniting Church Minister in Williamstown and Pasco Vale until retiring from full-time ministry in 1998. Peter is a very caring person. He is glad that throughout his more than 61 years as an ordained minister, he's been able to care and nurture so many people. He tells me that he contributed to various committees in the Presbyterian Church and the Uniting Church and we all take part in committee that the Uniting Church has more committees than it needs probably <laughs> but this one was a, a a very good committee because he contributed greatly to the welfare of Uni Uniting Church ministry agents to his work on the Synod Ministerial Entitlements Committee and his work endures in that that regard. He now he helped actually put any money in. No, but he, <laughs> he worked it all out. He, and now he helps look after the story of the church by volunteering in the uh, church archives. He's very grateful for the many to the many people who have cared for him, as he mentioned in his uh, preamble to the communion especially his late wife Val and his two children, Ali and Jeff. So it's a great privilege for me to be able to come here today to present the Reverend Peter Orman with this certificate marking the 60th anniversary of his ordination, albeit on the 61st. Thank you. Thank you.
Tom, thank you. So much to say thank you for. Uh, there are, whoops, spraying them around. There are plenty of copies of, you know, there are plenty of copies of the brochure to which Tom referred, except that I haven't got one here with me at the moment. But that's why I don't need it. I just wanted to wave it around because if you missed out, they're think? over on the table. And uh, uh, I, uh, so mostly what I want to do is say thanks. So many people to give thanks for. I want first of all to speak about Val and Ali and Jeff, who've been with me for much of that ministry and who are not with me today um, because um, Jeff and his family have got the COVID in the Gold Coast. <laughs> so there's two reasons why they're not here. Ali is on shift at Laminex all day today, just up the road, making those building materials that everybody needs. And Val has died. Val was my companion and support through much of that time and I owe a great deal to her but also to many of you and to the so many friends I woke up several times last night as I often do for various reasons uh, but every time I woke up I was thinking of someone else who really ought to be mentioned today but there were too many and it got away from me. And I said, shut up, Peter, and go back to sleep. <laughs> uh, a very small group of us, uh, again, constrained by COVID and all the practicalities of life, will have a little luncheon today. And I'm sorry that some of you uh, didn't get included in that. Uh, but thank you to those who can. Di and Greg, of course, who uh, made this occasion so splendid, so meaningful, and who carefully selected the lectionary readings. <laughs> <laughs> and they worked out very well. Um, although I have to say, when I first heard that uh, I was getting my certificate on the 1st of May, my first thought was, May Day, <laughs> <laughs> up the workers. <laughs> Uh, I nearly wore my red stole, but uh, Easter trumped uh, the revolution, <laughs> and so it should. Uh, what more to say? Uh, I love you, and loving uh, care uh, has been be very much you very what much. it's all yeah, been about. Thank you. Can I take this? The yes, loving thank care you. that rescued me from the ruins of a an engineering degree that didn't work out uh, uh, and left me with some great learnings. Um, I was glad to hear that Tom uh, is a, a scientist. In fact, he's much more than a scientist. He's an archivist of science. So he has two excellences, tick, tick. Uh, I carried uh, my scientific background with me through my training and my career and my ministry. And uh, uh, it has also shaped my uh, progressive theology. But you'll notice I'm still a, a traditional liturgical sort of person who does things by the book. Uh, but we're all different. You're all different. Some of you have given me great care on looking at Jocelyn, who was so caring of Val in those years, and uh, looking at all of you. At, um, well, it's invidious to name names, so I'll just look deeply and lovingly at all of you and think very much of the many who have uh, been part of that. I brought with me and uh, this is the end, uh, it must be the end. I brought with me the form of call that was used to call me to the parish of Mobinoth in Gippsland uh, 
in, uh, not, let's get this right, 1960. Uh, and in the old Presbyterian church, uh, the way you got ordained was to do your training and get all your approvals, but then they put you in a parish with a license to preach the gospel, no sacraments. Uh, and when you got there, if they liked you and loved you and called you, then you could get ordained. The presbytery would carefully check the details. This is what the call that was presented to me said. Uh, uh, the congregations of Merbu North, Mardan, Mardan South, Balara, in connection with the Presbyterian Church of Victoria, listen to this, desirous of promoting the glory of God and the good of the church, being also destitute of a pastor and well <laughs> assured of the ministerial abilities, piety, literature and prudence, as likewise of the suitableness to our circumstances of you, Peter Carl Orman. <laughs> so that's a pretty big thing to be hit by. It's not exactly a bolt of lightning that knocks you off the horse. <laughs> uh, but um, those sorts of bolts of lightnings, of course, had come earlier in the story when um, I was struggling with what I do next. Um, and they ha it goes on, I won't read the lot. They have invited to call, entreat, as we do hereby heartily invite, call and entreat you to undertake the office of pastor. So they were pretty earnest about it, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and I loved them and uh, uh, some of them didn't like me, but uh, uh, we had a great time and it was a good place. And so it's been. And in due course, we came to Cheltenham and what a ride it's been. Thank you. God bless us all.